Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial by Stoby. In this one I'm going to go through how you build a nuclear craft fission reactor. So, the fission reactor is the first step of nuclear craft and it allows you to process LEU fuel into power and the depleted version of itself. The most basic ones, either you use thorium or you use uranium. I will recommend you use uranium, but I'll go through the different ones later. But what, you, how it holds things starts, you need to get yourself an isotope separator. And then in this isotope separator, this is where you input either your uranium or your thorium, which then splits it into two components. Depending on the fuel, thorium becomes, if we have a look, Thorium becomes Thorium-232 and Thorium-230. Now the Thorium-232 is what becomes the fuel. And then the tiny clumps are, this is actually, if I have a look, I don't, yeah. This is actually completely useless unless you turn it into lead using the decay hastener. So thor this is why I wouldn't recommend you use Thorium because basically half of it's useless. Whereas if you use uranium, it becomes uranium two three, a tiny clump of uranium two three five, and a clump of uranium two three eight. So if we have a look here, you can see that here, and eight of these and nine of these makes one LeU two three five. Now LeU two three five is the basic uranium fuel. It's actually better than, um. It's better than the thorium fuel, so again, just use the other U, it's much better. But then that depends on what you've got access to. If thorium's easier to access, you might want to go for the thorium fuel. So here I've got my source of uranium here. I'm just using a creative chest because I'm on creative mode, so I can do that. You'd have to have an actual legitimate way of getting uranium, so that might be like a void ore miner or something that produces uranium. That's then pumped into the isotope separator, and you can see we've got it crafting the big lumps of uranium 235 and the LEU fuel. Now, this then goes into the fission controller. Now, this menu, if I grab it, if you just place this down, this is what the menu will look like. So, number one, note we have casing incomplete. I'll have to go through how to construct it later in the video. We've got the RF per tick, we've got the heat per tick, which is those are different. We've got the no fuel, this is where it will tell you, if you go into this one, you can see it's telling you you've got LEO235. And then that runs the amount of fuel cells you've got. So in this design here, which is a very basic design, you can see we have three. So you can see here we've got 1,400 RF per tick. Now this is based off the amount of fuel cells you have and based off the amount of efficiency you have. I don't know the specific rules for this, it doesn't matter, I'll link down below to a website which will have something that which A, designs your reactor for you, so you can input parameters and it will design it for you, or there's one which will run all the rules, so instead of having to construct it in Minecraft each time and then test it, you can just go on there and you can draw it out using the app, and it's a lot easier than actually constructing it in game. But, what's important here is the heat units per tick. Now this you want to stay below zero. And the RF per tick, which is how much power this thing generates. Now this current design, this power cable here is just what will go off your energy system. I'm just trashing the energy. And also, when you process one LEU, you will get one depleted LEU. And then this goes on to the next part of nuclear craft. Now this is where you take a depleted LEU, so you've r let's imagine you've got your nuclear reactor, you've run it through and now you've got a bunch of depleted LEUs. And what you do with this is you can put it into an ice fuel reprocessor. Now this will split it into various other four components. These components you then process into more different fuels. So if you go into fuel, you will see that there is a lot of nuclear craft fuels. 
and then eventually you'll run through all of these until you get down to these. So what happens is you'll take your depleted fuel, split it apart into its components, recombine those components into a different fuel, which then splits apart into a different fuel, which then splits apart into a different fuel. And it's a long and elaborate process that I'm probably going to do a separate video on. And that just that's just some. But if to be honest, if you just want some basic, um, if you just want a high RF per tick, I recommend you just stick with LU two three five and just stick with making the reactor bigger rather than using the more complicated fuels. Using the more complicated fuels is quite technical and is like a very long crafting tree because then you go into this and then you go oh and then this and then that becomes this fuel which becomes this and it, it just takes a while to go through the whole process so I recommend you just make the reactor bigger it's just a lot of a simpler process now for constructing the reactor what you need is firstly alright so now we're going to go on to how to build the actual reactor core and the first thing you need is you need fission reactor casings. Now this completely surrounds the reactor. Now you can see you don't need to have the edges or the corners. You just need to plate the sides. But all sides must be plated in this. So I'm just going to construct a basic shell here. And then I'm just going to do that and then we'll just pretend that I built it all the way up. So there are three components that can go inside. We can have the reactor cells, the reactor cells. We have the reactor coolers. Now there are two types of cooler. For now, I'm just going to go through these normal coolers. So I'm just going to take out a water one, for example. And we have the reactor. And then we have either graphite blocks or we have brilliant blocks don't tell don't ask why there are two i don't know it's really weird but you can either have brilliant blocks or graphite blocks so the reactor cells define how much power it produces and how much fuel it consumes the more cells the more fuel consumes but the more um power that your reactor will produce now and, and also that will mean that there's more heat that's produced. And the heat that is produced needs to be balanced by the coolers. Now these basic coolers will each have, if you go onto the coolers and then you shift on them, you can see that each one has its own rules. I won't go through all the rules because they tell you them themselves, but each one has a specific purpose in mind and has specific rules. Some of them link together, so like you can see this one, it needs a water cooler and a redstone cooler. So then you go to the redstone cooler, you see, okay, so that needs a reactor cell. That one needs a reactor cell or an active moderator block. So what it's intending you to do here is intending you to go there, there, and then get out the gold cooler, like so. And it's intending you to kind of design it like that. So you can see how these all can link together and mesh together to create your react design and this is why i recommend you play around with the app because it's much easier and it tells you like different what different um what different combinations work and it will tell you if it's built in a, incorrectly but if i trim off this this should be enough so you can see that i can then place on the lid and you can see that this will tell me look we've got no fuel we've got negative 780 heat and we have one cell. So this apparently is a valid reactor. I will admit this looks weird. But apparently this is valid. And those are different components. Now these graphite blocks and beryllium blocks. These increase the efficiency of the reactor. So what this means is they basically are the direct opposite of reactor cells. So a reactor cell the more you have the more fuel it consumes. And the more power that you will produce. The efficiency ones will decrease the amount of fuel that it uses and it will also uh, it will decrease the amount of fuel it uses and will mean that each fuel lasts longer which means that you can produce more power with less fuel. So that's why you'd include them in the reactor design. To use these they have to be next to a reactor cell and that's their rule. 
Now the final thing is this active fluid cooler. Now these are different to these. These are referred to as passive coolers because you just place them down and they do the cooling rate that's on the packet. Whereas active coolers will consume, for example here you can see it consumes 10 millibuckets of water and will consume the fluids for an uh, increased cooling rate. Now how you get the fluids to them is let's say we got the edge of our reactor here and we've got a fluid cooler here and a reactor cell here. So this is just a sample reactor. Now to get the fluids to this you can see that you can't put a pipe instead of this casing because that will break the outside of the casing. So what you need to do is you need to get out what's called a buffer. So these. And what you do is you place it next to, directly next to, where the fluid thing is. Now this, you can see, will store RF and millibuckets. So that's fluids. So what you can do is you can take a infinite water source. I'm just going to use an eternal water source. Place it on there. And that will put water into the buffer. And then this active fluid cooler will draw the water out of the buffer. And then this will then run, use that water, and use the... And then we'll cool the reactor. Um, and finally, this is a lot, I know. But the final thing is the fission reactor port. Which looks similar to the buffer, but is different. You can see it looks similar, but it's different. So what this does is it takes, is it acts exactly like the oh actually something i forgot to mention the fission controller needs a redstone signal to run so any fission reactor you can see if you turn it off the redstone signal it just won't do anything you have to turn it off give it a redstone signal now that's important because this acts like a second fission controller so let's say you got this let's say in this situation here you can see that this thing is completely covered in cables so let's say I wanted to attach another power cable to this. Well, I can't because it's covered in cables. So what I do is I take the fission reactor port, I put it, for example, here, and then I can just take out power from this rather than this. And so if you see, if I actually you know, steal this trash can, then you can see it will start filling up its energy buffer here. So I can put the trash can there, and you can see it will draw out the power. Now this also... It's actually, it tells you the efficiency, so you can see that's caused by these graphite blocks. But it has internal rules about different graphite blocks and their auto orientation. And then you can see we've got the heat and the cooling. So, that's the, that is how you use the fission reactor in nuclear craft. So, if you enjoy this video, please like Please like, subscribe, like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video and that's everything.